Good morning, YouTubers. This is the 1950s RCA Whirlpool Bambi. Um, this machine I got from Sean Curry earlier this summer. Him and Wilhelm had found this machine down in Texas at the Amarillo Hall. This is a pretty rare machine. I don't know how many exactly exist anymore, but it's a very bare bones, extremely bare bones machine. <clears throat> and the fact that it's pretty much just a motor mounted inside a metal aluminum type case with some paint. Um, it's very extremely bare bones. There's Shiva. Hi Shiva. Say hi everyone. Yeah. Um, I do have the original hose. Sean sold me the original hose and I believe he had the rug tool with it. Possibly I think this crevice tool goes with it, but I'm not 100% sure. These two attachments Ken Wagman had, so I bought these two from Ken, so I think it's kind of a match. They, I think it's a perfect match that I found them with this, because those are the two tools that I was missing. These two wands do not go with this machine. This machine, I think, would have had friction fit wands, because there's no tabs inside here or inside the hose. Um... This machine was one of the first Whirlpool ever made. I'm not 100% sure how to date them. I don't know when they were made, how many they made. I think they were made up through the late 50s or the early 60s. I had to get zoomed in on that. I cannot. This has RCA Whirlpool Corporation, St. Joseph, Michigan. Um, it's funny in the fact that it this whole bumper is its is its guard. It's like a furniture guard. And it's just a metal coated bumper. And then this is a pain. You gotta flip that up. And this whole thing comes off. This is the whole plate. Front plate, sorry. And then here's the bag. It's a very interesting little bag. This is an original Whirlpool bag. I do have some originals downstairs. But all it is, it's hard to see down in there, but that is just the motor. That's it. And there's a filter that goes over it, kind of like the Kenmore's of its day. And other Whirlpools like the Imperial Mark 12 of that time would have had something similar to that. But this machine, sorry, it's a machine. So I'll just put that back on real quick. Um, it just slides into a tab up here and then goes, gets into place. I'm still using my phone, so the quality probably isn't that great. Um, yeah, so Sean got this machine from Amarillo, the Amarillo Hall down in Texas. Look on back to the end if you want to see pictures of that. That was a lot of rare machines, including this one, were found there. So I, this is one of the many machines I got from Sean, so I want to thank you, Sean. And then thank you, Ken, for the two attachments. So this machine is pretty much complete. Um, an interesting note is I've seen three different versions of this machine. The one that the museum has, it's a little bit different color. It's a lighter blue. This is more of a turquoise. Well, theirs is more of a turquoise. This one's like a darker bluish sea, sea foam green type color. It's still a very attractive color in my opinion. But another one I've seen is there's a... Across this front plate here... Get out of here, sheep. Um, across this front plate here is like this speckled type like sticker. I don't know if this one got it taken off or if it was just that's how it was. The back side would have been the same way too. Um, the cord wraps around on the bottom. This is one of the earliest machines that had a cord hook. Hoover had the cord hook. Remember Hoover had the cord hook patent on the 150. So I'll get it hooked up really quickly and then I will run it. It is kind of loud for its day because then all of this is a motor inside a case. It's an extremely bare bones model machine but still very well made. But I believe this will be the only YouTube video of one in action so bear with me. So there it is all hooked up. This is like a carpet and rug floor tool I believe. Pardon the dirt on the floor with having a dog and 
working as many hours as I've been working, I can vacuum every day, but, um, the switch is on the side right here, on the side of the machine, um, actually I'm going to turn on the Okay, so I turned on the light. should be easier to see the machine. And the cord is extremely short, so... We'll see. Shiva does not... She is alright with the vacuum, but she is not a huge fan of it, so... This tool is weird in the fact that... It's... Uh, that it just... It goes friction fit, all friction fit wands. Of course, I'm using the button ones from my Kenmore 75 downstairs. I brought this one up from upstairs, but here it is. filter in there right now. I do have the bag though, so probably gonna hook up some AC filter to it just to hopefully quiet it down a bit. But it is an interesting little vacuum and hold on, I'll be right back. I'm gonna put it all away and everything. I have it all back, put back. It doesn't take that long to take everything back. The hose fits in the machine. Um, it's got like a little push button tab. Um, Suction relief valve. This floor brush does not do well on this carpet, especially with the dog hair. No, honestly, none of my straight suction machines do well on this carpet. This carpet is absolutely horrendous to vacuum. <laughs> That's one reason why I don't like it. And then with the dog hair, it doesn't make it any better, right, Sheba? But that's not your fault. Um, yeah, so this one is kind of like a rubbery type material, so you friction friction fit to hold those two on. This thing's friction fit and of course this thing is generally um, in those days they all were little locking tab for the cord and the cord just wraps around the bottom of the machine. No cord winder, nothing like that. Um, it is an interesting vacuum cleaner and I do love it <laughs> as much as it's cheap, it is cheap as it is and why not actually get a better shot of the inside so you can actually now see the inside a little bit better. So that's all it is, just a, just that. Um, it is a little bit dirty. I haven't, clean, I haven't had much time to clean it. All it, is, all it is is the motors mounted to the bottom plate. Air comes out through here. I think it possibly, possibly could have had something there at one point. I'm not 100% sure. Um... But yeah, it's a interesting vacuum cleaner in the sense that it's so rare nowadays. And the bag. You can tell a Bambi bag. If your bag looks like this, it's a Bambi bag, so. Um, I do have some original Whirlpool bags for it, and I also do have some Imperial Mark 12 bags that Sean sold me. He sold me a lot, even including a Kenmore cloth bag. I can't remember what the bag number is on it off the top of my head, but... As for filming videos, I'm doing everything I can. Actually, I'm in the process of leaving. I'm going to be moving entirely out of the out of Illinois, moving to North Carolina. I need to get out of here. I'm, I miss North Carolina. I used to live there, as some of you may know. But this machine, along with my entire other pieces from my collection, will be going with. And um, I'm going to do videos. As, here and there for the next couple of weeks, like this machine I wanted to do, and I'm probably going to do my roll easy next. But after that, I'm going to be in North Carolina, um, staying with a family member, so my collection will be going into storage, including my washing machine. So once I buy my own house, which I hope to do by next year, I will have 
my own vacuum, definite own vacuum area. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to have it decorated. I'm going to have it full flex vacuum territory. So, and there's 30 machines already down there, and there's I don't know how many up here I haven't counted, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed the short video of the Imperia of the RCA Whirlpool Bambi. Thank you. So thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe.